Welcome back to Briggs on Books. Are you about to pick the next book you read or the next book to add to your list? You're going to want to check this one out. It's called Pandora's Theorem. Not only do I have the book here, I have the author here who's going to tell us about the book and his inspiration and why and how he wrote it. Welcome to our show, Brian Christopher Murphy, the author of Pandora's Theorem. Welcome, Brian. Hey, Mike. How are you doing? Good to see you again. Very good. I was reading up on this book a little. It's pretty exciting. Set in Canada. Are you from Canada? No, I'm actually originally from Indianapolis, uh, but I was in Canada at the time I was writing it, yeah. so that's why I, I made that location, because different locations, such as Ryerson University, was kind of in my neighborhood, and yeah. so I'm, I'm familiar with all the different locations, that's why I'm able to write them so well. And yeah. A lot of the characters were based off friends of mine, and mm -hmm. though the descriptions may have been a bit different, you know, some of the people yeah. and some of the personalities were kind of theirs. And, you know, a lot of authors do that. It's, yeah. You know, a certain part of our lives kind of go into the books as well, and, you know, the, the key character is actually, uh, that was more a construct than yeah. Jameson. Uh, that like Michelle Bouvet, that was a close friend, and the mm -hmm. cat moth was his cat, and you know, just I had a lot of fun. It took me yeah. four years to write. Oh that my book. goodness! It, it yeah. turned out pretty good, I think. Yeah. What uh, is? Look, did you say it, whether it was set in a certain city, city in Canada? Yeah, it's set in Toronto. Toronto. Okay. So people from Toronto will recognize places and things in the book. Right. Now, um, I, what got my heart beating, and it always does when you said the Royal Canadian Mounted Police <laughs> started searching for the suspect. I always thought that's neat that they have that in Canada. Yeah, the uh, RCMP is, uh, yeah, that was a bit of a mis misnomer because the R RCMP is more equivalent to our FBI. So. Mm. Now, they, you know, that being international terrorism, yeah, they'd be involved. Yeah. You know, things like that. There may be a few Canadian-ish things that I didn't quite get right, but mm -hmm. I try to get my best friend to help me edit it. He's like, no, I want, I, I want to wait until it's done. <laughs> okay, but once it's done, you can't complain. Yeah. Okay? yeah, can't complain when it's finished. What period, what year did you uh, finish writing it? Uh, I finished writing in 2002, I think, mm -hmm. and maybe later in 2002, and then 2003 was when it actually published, and it published. was originally yeah. published through Author House. And what would you say the genre is? Who's going to want to read this book? Uh, be probably under a medical thriller. Mm -hmm. Uh, and maybe get a little into science fiction, but mainly I would say medical thriller. Medical thriller, yeah. But it almost sounded like something that could, you know, believably happen in today's day and age. Oh, yeah, I, I kind of think so, especially seeing that with all the advances in digital technologies and medical technologies, you know, and, you know, telomeres, that's, that's been a known science, you know, uh -huh. science of aging and things like that. That's, that's been known for quite a while. Yeah. Uh, so I'm not too much into the science fiction. Though. By the way, here's the cover, uh, which is a very dramatic cover. Uh, so yeah, I, I actually designed that myself. I did not use a design department. I just kind of came up with that, I think. Uh, I don't know what inspired it, but it was just sort of, I think the theory of Pandora's box, you don't know what you're going to get, mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of where I drew my inspiration for the cover, you know, madness, mayhem, or yeah. money, of course, uh, yeah, kind of all the different elements I see as contributing, you know, to those different, you know, kind of the, the motive for murder, so to speak. Yeah. Almost a formula for murder. Uh, yeah, uh, really. I was just kind of thinking, no, but this, this, that just sounds kind of cool. <laughs> but hey, author, go yeah. figure. Now, I, uh, before I start any interview, I punch up to the Amazon, and it popped right up, very easy to find. Where, where else can people get the book? Uh, if... <laughs> If they're still around, like Borders Bookstores, mm -hmm. Barnes and Noble, 
uh, probably Amazon is your best bet. I'm not sure what booksellers. There's really only three uh, book distributors, like yeah. uh, Baker, Taylor, Brown, and I can't remember the third. Yeah. Uh, but so where else? But definitely Amazon. I know it's available there. Hardcover. I'm sure there are places where uh, you can find paperback copies. Yeah. Uh, with it having been available for so long, I think you know it's, it shouldn't be too hard to find. Yep, they should be out there. If they're out there, they're out there. You can find them, that's for sure. And now it's it in, I call the versions you have uh, analog, <laughs> good old hardcover and paperback. Did, right. Did it? Yeah, because see, one of the issues, that was supposed to be the first book in a trilogy uh. that I was working on. Uh, and unfortunately, the manuscript for it is on a three and a half inch disc. <laughs> well, those are now obsolete. So. Yeah. Even if I still had that disc, I lost it somewhere yep. along the line. You know, I've moved a few times since I lived in Toronto. Uh, I moved back to the U.S. at the end of '04, so yeah. somewhere along the line, the original manuscript was lost, and I never got around to writing, you know, a second in that trilogy. Yeah. I figure, well, still a lot of years left, so I may kind of yeah. get around to doing that. I have, uh, my kids are grown, but they would not know what a three and a half inch disc was. So that's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> so. yeah I'm sure we've both seen so many things come and yeah. go, the, you know, the VCR, and, uh, remember eight track tapes. Yep. Yeah, eight those track tapes. Things. And, well, I, uh, my grandfather had one. I went, ooh, look, an eight track, just like <laughs> Sony. Well, they, uh, you could send the book out to a typist and just have them retype the whole thing for you. You'd have a manuscript, and uh, uh, you're young. I mean, you're really a young man, relatively, and uh, there's plenty of time for you to come out with the two more, uh, two more yeah, in the series. It, it's really amazing today's digital technology. So, yeah. of course, we got print-on-demand now, because back then, yeah. to publish a book, it was a minimum 10,000 copy run, yep. whereas now they can be printed as they're ordered. And, you know, it may take a while if you order a copy to get it, but yeah. again, it's being freshly printed and minted and, mm -hmm. you know, because that was some, some friends that, you know, they ordered a copy, but it took forever to get it, and I'm like, well, back then, it would have. Right. Right. That's amazing that the technology has come so far for, for uh, authors and publishing and uh, people who never had a chance to be a publisher are now able to write books and get them out there, and that, that is great. Uh, uh, Brian, we're running out of time. I know you have a lot of other uh, irons in the fire, so to speak, so we hope we see more books come out. And I, I encourage our viewers, go check this one out. Uh, I was getting to the point, it's not on Kindle, is that right? It's not on audiobook, it's just on the old, good old analog uh, hardcover and paperback? Yeah, just hardcover, paperback. Uh, I've done a lot of recent writing, you know, there's some articles available on LinkedIn about leadership in the 21st century. And uh, you know, I've still got some works out there. I have a book outlined done about adulting and through the generations uh, that may be coming into a book form. I don't know. It's kind of see because I do enjoy writing, but I have a lot of yeah. creative outlets as well. Yeah, so we may see another book uh, by you in another genre. Who knows? Yeah, and then uh, I have a new show coming out, actually. Uh, I have some PAR Real Talk guest spots. So that's become a recurring thing. Mm -hmm. And then I have a new show that's going to be coming out. Uh, it will be available on a couple different streaming platforms nice. and available through uh, the channel store on Roku TV, mm -hmm. Fire TV, uh, iHeartRadio. Yeah. So, yeah, things are really kind of taken off and going in different directions. And what will the subject of that show be? Uh, actually, it's going to be about investing, you know, making more money, saving more money, spending your money, uh, spending less, and investing wisely, and, you know, just to get you to the, the life of your dreams. Very good. Really, uh, you know, great time. Pretty much what I've talked about before on our business investing segment. Very good. Our guest is author Brian Christopher Murphy. Go to Amazon or go wherever you want and check out his book. It's a thriller. You call it a thriller, Brian? 
Yeah, uh, it starts out kind of sleepy, uh, honestly, but for a first book, it was pretty good. But once the killing starts, it gets a lot better. <laughs> it gets going, gets moving. All right. Uh, thank you, Brian. And uh, for our viewers, stick around because we'll be back with more um, authors right after this.